you need to expose any ports to the wide area network, you're leaving them out in the open. Anybody on the internet could perform a port scan and start brute forcing or attempting to use any known exploits on them. One way to defend against this is to use port knocking, which means that all of your ports are going to appear as if they're closed until somebody knocks on the correct ports in the right order. In other words, they need to attempt to open a socket to those ports. When the correct knock is performed, the IP address is added to a secure address list, which is allowed access. To demonstrate this, I have set up an RB5009 with the default configuration, which means there is one WAN port and several LAN ports. And I've set up access both to the WAN port and a LAN port. So let's set up the port knocking. I'm going to set up the port knock on the WAN port. Let's have a look at my firewall configuration. As you can see, I have the def conf there. And the most important line here is the chain input drop not LAN, which means that any incoming connections to the router are going to be dropped if they're coming from the WAN. So if we're going to set up our port knocking sequence, it, it will need to be set up above this rule. So let's add the first port that needs to be knocked on. For the first knock, I'm going to use the destination port 888 and I'll just add the IP address to a list also named 888. I'll add 30 second timeout. So once somebody opens a connection to that port, they have 30 seconds to perform the next knock. And I need to place this rule um, somewhere at the top. So I'm just gonna do place before zero. It got added at the top, uh, but also it is also a good idea to set it only to be enforced for the WAN port. So let me just set uh, zero in interface list WAN. There, that's better. So now let's add the next knock and then the last one. And in this case, I also want to make sure that the address is in the previous list. So there, it has to be in the 888 list already. And then we're going to place before uh, one. Okay, now add I'll name this address list as secured and I'll set the timeout to be 30 minutes so that within the window of 30 minutes I can disconnect and connect again without having to perform the knock sequence again. Okay, now, now there is a mechanism in place for somebody to perform the knock and be placed in the secured list. So now we need to add a rule which is going to allow anybody in the secured list to access the router. Now that is port knocking uh, in its simplest form set up, but there's a problem with this. If somebody is scanning your ports and they just happen to scan these specific ports in the right order, they will actually unlock the other ports that were hidden. So let's try that. Let's run an nmap scan and see what happens. Okay, um, now this is interesting. As you can see, I found basically all of these service ports on my router. So what happened here? 
if we go on the section IP firewall address list, we can see um, what addresses have been added to any lists. So if we print, we can see that um, our IP address was actually added to all of the lists, including the secured list from this one simple nmap command. Um, so we, we kind of got lucky here. So the nmap does uh, the port scan in somewhat of a semi-random order. So it just happened so that it did the correct order and accessed the router and scanned all the ports in one go. Left as it is, this is not very secure. But there are several things that we could do to actually make this secure. So the first thing I will try is to add a blacklist. So if anybody scans the wrong port, they'll be added to a blacklist. And you could go even further and add them to the blacklist if they knock on the right ports but in the wrong order. Now that would be a pretty long configuration. So I'll just add a simple uh, blacklist. So first we add a rule to drop anything in the blacklist. Okay, so if anybody is in this blacklist, they will not even be allowed to perform the knock anymore. There are several ways how you could add IP addresses to this blacklist. First, let's create a bad port. If anybody is running a port scan, they will scan this bad port and they'll be immediately added to this blacklist, preventing them to perform the knock further. There, if somebody scans my 666 port, they're added to the blacklist for 16 hours and 14 minutes, which on the internet is pretty much an eternity. Obviously, this is still pretty weak protection. Somebody could figure out that this one port is bad and just not scan it. Now let's go further and add another rule, which blacklists IP addresses if they're not in the secured list already, and they try to connect to specific ports. This time I'll set the timeout to be just one minute because we don't want to be blacklisted ourselves if we forget that we are already timed out from our secured list. And in fact, for somebody attempting to scan 60,000 something ports, one minute is a lot already. And I'll just pick some commonly used ports like FTP, SSH, Telnet, Winbox, service port. And in fact, I can add an entire range such as 10,000 all the way up to 60,000. Then under the source address list, specify exclamation mark secured. And finally, we'll place it at the top again. Now let's try to SSH into our router from the WAN and see what happens. And nothing happened because we got put in the blacklist for one minute. Similarly, if we do the nmap scan, we're gonna be blacklisted again. Okay, we're in the blacklist because we scanned the really bad port. Okay, let's remove ourselves from the blacklist. And now I'm going to show you how to actually access the device. One way would be to use a port knock client, but that's really not necessary. You can do that with a bash script. We'll we use nmap in this script as well, but nmap on itself, again, might scan the ports in the wrong order. So we, we're gonna, we need to use a bash script.
As you can see, I knocked on these three ports successfully. Now, if I check my lists, you can see I'm on the secured list. So if I SSH now, I'm given access to my router. In fact, at this point, I could have accessed um, any service port that's listed on my router. If you go on IP service, you can see the default list. You should probably change those port numbers if you're going to expose them to, to the internet as it's going to complicate things even further for any attackers and disable any of those services that you're actually not going to be using. If you have also set up port forwarding or VPN, those ports would at this point also be exposed to the IP address in the secured list. That's about all that we're going to do in this demonstration. But as I said before, you could go even further to, to make this an even more secure setup. For example, with each knock, you could send a passphrase that the router verifies and you could limit the login attempts. We might cover those in other videos. Thank you for watching.